Okay, let us now move on to the next segment. This concept is basic but crucial to the study of energy transductions in the cell. This is the concept of biological oxidation from which all energy comes from and what we can say makes life possible. Biological oxidation is the type of oxidation which occurs in biological systems to produce energy. Oxidation in the cell can occur in several ways, the least common route of which is via the addition of oxygen. Another way is with the removal of hydrogen, but the most common route is to the direct removal of electrons. Electrons, however, are not stable in the free state, so their removal from a substance or oxidation must be accompanied by their acceptance by another substance or the process of reduction. Hence, the reaction is called oxidation, reduction, reaction, or redox reaction, and the involved enzymes are called oxidoreductases. The flow of electrons in oxidation reduction reactions is responsible directly or indirectly for all work done by living organisms. As a review, remember that the electron donating molecule in an oxidation reduction reaction is called the reducing agent or the reductant. On the other hand, the electron accepting molecule is the oxidizing agent or the oxidant. A given agent such as an iron cation existing in the ferrous or iron plus 2 or ferric or iron plus 3 states, as we will see in the next slide, functions as a conjugate reductant oxidant or redox pair, similar to an acid and corresponding base function as a conjugate acid base pair. Let us now look at a particular example, the oxidation of ferrous ion by cupric ion. Although oxidation and reduction must occur together, it is convenient when describing electron transfers to consider the two halves of an oxidation-reduction reaction separately. Let's revisit certain caveats. Oxidation, as we know, is defined as the loss of electrons. Thus, with the loss of electrons, ferrous or iron plus 2 will have an increase in oxidation state and become ferric or iron plus 3 because it has lost an electron and its charge increased from plus 2 to plus 3. Consequently, reduction is defined as a gain of electrons. With the gain of electrons, cupric or copper plus 2 will have a decrease in oxidation state to become cuprous or copper plus 1. This is because the copper ion has gained that electron and its charge decreased from plus 2 to plus 1. In redox reactions, we can write a similar general equation as such. Electron donor equals electron plus electron acceptor. In the reversible half reaction 1 shown here, ferrous or iron plus 2 is the electron donor and ferric or iron plus 3 is the electron acceptor. Together, ferrous and ferric constitute a conjugate redox pair. Similarly, in the reversible half reaction 2, again shown here, cupric or copper plus 2 is the electron acceptor, while cuprous or copper plus 1 is the electron donor. Again, together, copper plus 2 and copper plus 1 constitute a conjugate redox pair. Most of the time, oxidation or the loss of electrons is coincident with the loss of hydrogen. In biological systems, oxidation is often synonymous with dehydrogenation, and many enzymes that catalyze oxidation reactions are termed aside from being oxidoreductases as dehydrogenases. Notice that the more reduced compounds are richer in hydrogen, in this case alcohol shown here, whereas the more oxidized compounds, for example acetaldehyde shown here, have less hydrogen. As you have learned from your lectures in enzymes and coenzymes, Dehydrogenation or oxidation reduction reactions are catalyzed by oxidoreductases or dehydrogenases. These are enzymes that oxidize a substrate by a reduction reaction that transfers one or more hydrides to an electron acceptor, usually NAD or NADP or a flavin coenzyme such as FAD or FMN. Moving on, let us now look into the various ways how electrons are transferred among atoms or molecules. Electrons are transferred from the electron donor to the electron acceptor in one of four different ways. 
all four types occur in cells. First, electrons are transferred directly as electrons. For example, the ferrous ferric redox pair can transfer an electron to the cuplus cuplic redox pair as what we have seen several slides back. Secondly, electrons can be transferred as hydrogen atoms. Recall that a hydrogen atom consists of a proton or a hydrogen ion and a single electron. In this case, we can write the general equation as such. As a caution, please do not mistake this reaction for an acid dissociation. The electron transferred arises from the removal of a hydrogen atom that includes both proton or hydrogen ion and an electron. This is not just a proton or hydrogen ion as what occurs in acid dissociations. Thirdly, electrons are transferred in the form of a hydride ion, which has two electrons. This occurs in the case of NAD-linked dehydrogenases as shown here. And lastly, electrons are transferred via direct combination with oxygen. In this case, oxygen combines with an organic reductant and is covalently incorporated in the product as in the oxidation of a hydrocarbon to an alcohol. The hydrocarbon is the electron donor, while the oxygen atom is the electron acceptor. All four types of electron transfer occur in cells. The neutral term reducing equivalent is commonly used to designate a single electron equivalent participating in an oxidation-reduction reaction, no matter whether this equivalent is an electron per se, a hydrogen atom, or a hydride ion, or whether the electron transfer takes place in a reaction with oxygen to yield an oxygenated product. However, because biological fuel molecules are usually enzymatically dehydrogenated to lose two reducing equivalents at a time, and because each oxygen atom can accept two reducing equivalents, biochemists by convention regard the unit of biological oxidations as two reducing equivalents passing from substrate to oxygen. Let's now move on to the concept of reduction potential. When two conjugate redox pairs are together in solution, electron transfer from the electron donor of one pair to the electron acceptor of the other may proceed spontaneously. The tendency for such a reaction depends on the relative affinity of the electron acceptor of each redox pair for electrons. The standard deduction potential, notated as E01 with unit in volts, is a measure of this affinity. Hydrogen has the lowest redox potential at negative 0.42 volts, while oxygen has the highest redox potential at plus 0.82 volts. The redox potentials of all other substances lie between that of hydrogen and oxygen. The relative positions of redox systems allow prediction of the direction of flow of electrons from one redox couple to another. The usefulness of reduction potential stems from the fact that when redox potential or E values have been determined for any two half cells relative to the standard hydrogen electrode, their reduction potentials relative to each other are, are also known. We can then predict the direction in which electrons will tend to flow. When the two half cells are connected to an external circuit or when components of both half cells are present in the same solution, electrons tend to flow to the half cell with the more positive E and the strength of the tendency is proportional to the difference in reduction potentials or delta E. It is thus possible to calculate the free energy change for any biological redox reaction at any concentration of the redox pairs. This table lists the standard deduction potentials of various half-reactions of oxidation-reduction reactions occurring in the cell. Again, please recall that the standard deduction potential measures the tendency of a chemical species to acquire electrons and thereby be reduced. As seen in the table here, pyridoxine has the greatest tendency to donate electrons, having the lowest or most negative standard reduction potential at negative 0.432 volt. This is followed by hydrogen at 0.42 volt. 
Oxygen, on the other hand, as shown here, has the highest redox potential at positive 0.82 volt. This indicates oxygen as the atom or molecule with the greatest tendency to accept electrons as shown by it having the highest standard redox potential. Therefore, oxygen is usually referred to as the ultimate acceptor of electrons in the cell. Additionally, the redox potential of all other substances lie between that of ferredoxine and oxygen. The relative positions of redox systems allow prediction of the direction of flow of electrons from one redox couple to another. Knowing the standard reduction potentials of the two half reactions in a redox reaction is powerful. It is because the standard deduction potentials can be used to calculate the free energy change of the reaction as what can be seen from the equation shown here. Again, remember that electrons tend to flow to the half cell with a more positive standard deduction potential and the strength of that tendency is proportional to the difference in standard deduction potential. I spared you the nosebleed in the derivation of this equation associating standard free energy change of a reaction to that of the standard deduction potentials of its corresponding two half reactions. Let us just accept the relationship that the energy made available by this spontaneous electron flow or the free energy change or delta G for the oxidation reduction reaction is proportional to the standard reduction potential difference. In this equation, N represents the number of electrons transferred in the reaction. With this equation, we can calculate the free energy change for any oxidation reduction reaction from the values of E in the table of reduction potentials, certain known constants, and the concentrations of the species participating in the reaction. Thank you for watching this episode in this playlist. Check out the other videos in this playlist and please do subscribe to our channel and click the bell to be notified of new video episodes that will be regularly uploaded.